Hi, I'm Matt McGemory. I'm part of the agronomic team and today I want to talk about a issue, a subject that's kind of passing in the countryside. That subject of yellow corn, that peakedness that appears between the veins of corn in the spring, late spring, early summer. Um, you know, it doesn't really seem to be a yield reducing issue. We see this more years than not anymore and we still achieve these really really good yields but i do want to talk about the explanation for why we're seeing it this year i want to talk about that because maybe it helps us keep that in mind for growing seasons to come maybe some of the other things that it does for us though there's still a little bit of this lingering in the countryside so it helps us maybe keep that in mind as we see it and maybe helps give us a little hope that everything's gonna turn out okay. Um, but the other thing is, I think it also helps us appreciate how soil chemistry and plant physiology can interact to create issues like this or observations like this in the field. You know, the culprit really tends to be sulfur deficiency within the plant. And I want you to notice what I just said there, within the plant, I didn't say that it was a sulfur deficiency of the soil. There are some things that go on here that cause the plant to have less sulfur than what it needs early on. Again, that doesn't seem to have a detrimental impact upon yield, but that's really the explanation for what's happening. The plant just doesn't have internally what it needs at that point for the developmental stage that it happens to be at. So there are really four different things that are happening and they circle around temperature, moisture, organic matter levels, and then plant physiology. If we begin by looking at the sulfur cycle, one of the things that you will notice is that sulfur cycle looks really, really complicated. We have all sorts of arrows that kind of circle around that thing. We have some that actually feed back into different parts of the cycle, some that exit the cycle itself. It can become really daunting to look at the sulfur cycle, but I want us today to pay attention to that central portion of the cycle, that portion that deals with the decomposition of organic material, and then the subsequent release of sulfur, and then the action of bacteria called thiobacillus, belong to the genus thiobacillus, that then convert that sulfur into sulfate. They stick oxygens onto that sulfur molecule give that molecule a negative charge, and it becomes the primary way that the plant tends to absorb sulfur. It flows in with the water stream, frankly, much like nitrogen does. Nitrogen flows into the plant as nitrate. Now, what do you notice there? I said that bacteria are intimately involved in this process, and because bacteria have metabolism that kind of drives how active they are, and temperature actually influences metabolism, that begins to explain why we tend to see these symptoms in the early spring. We need thiobacillus to convert sulfur over to sulfate, and when we step out of 50, long-term 50 to 60 degree temperature periods with a lot of overcast skies, just gloomy, gloomy conditions like what we ran into this year, you're going to see the activity of those bacteria reduce dramatically. And that means they're gonna be cranking out less sulfate, that form that the plant tends to take up, which begins to partially explain what we're observing here. The other thing, those bacteria need oxygen to actually make this thing happen. And what do we tend to run into each spring? A lot of saturated soil conditions. So we have a slightly oxygen deprived environment, which again, slows down the activity of those bacteria, slows down the ability for us to see sulfate develop and actually accumulate within the soil. And so we again begin to see some of these sulfur deficiency symptoms. One of the other things that's been kind of interesting this year is that you can see, and you begin to see this maybe year in and year out, big differences in this yellowing based upon soil type. And a lot of times that difference circles around the amount of organic material present in the soil to begin with. If I'm talking about a dark soil with a lot of decomposing organic material, decomposing plant and animal material within it, that has a large kind of base of sulfur to begin with. And even though we slow down bacteria through temperature being pulled back or through a lot of moisture, 
there's still just enough sulfate that it keeps that plant a little bit greener. But if I'm talking about a light soil, kind of like what you see here surrounding me, and I talk about lower organic material to begin with, a little bit lower inherent sulfur supply to begin with, when I pull back those temperatures and when I introduce moisture, you're going to notice that even more in those light soil conditions. So soil type has a little bit to do with the observation of these symptoms as well. The last thing that we need to talk about though is plant development. I dug up a plant out here, and while we have a, a pretty good sized plant, we have an extremely small, look how small that is, an extremely small root system on it. And when we think about sulfur being in the sulfate form, that's the form the plant tends to absorb, sulfur in the sulfate form is negatively charged, and then that means it slowly percolates down to slightly deeper regions in the soil profile. It doesn't really leach out quite the way that nitrates do, but it does move lower. And when I start out early season, and I always start out with this very shallow, kind of underdeveloped root system, which is just what happens, it's really hard for that plant to have a root system in proximity to that sulfate that's been leached a little bit lower down. Now, what are we gonna see? We're gonna see these 80, 90 degree temperatures. We're gonna see a lot more root development. And with time, we're gonna see those roots then tap into that sulfate that's just a little bit deeper in the soil profile. That will help green up this plant. We'll also see that activity of bacteria accelerate as well, which will also provide more sulfate and will also help that plant secure more sulfur, develop that nice green color. Well, that's kind of the explanation for what we see year in, year out here. Like I said, maybe it explains what you've already been through. Maybe it explains what you're tending to see right now. And more importantly, maybe it helps us understand the dynamic nature of the system that we tend to work in, this beast that we tend to harness and try to harness when it comes to row crop agriculture. Thanks a lot. We'll talk with you soon. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.